If somebody has never read any of your books before and they just want to get started, what would you say is a theme or something that they would like about them? Um, I write love stories. I'm a love story type of girl, but I also deal with a lot of social issues. Um, so I deal very much with teens who are dealing with very adult problems, because let's just be honest, um, sometimes we think of the teen years, we, we look back and we think, oh, it was so great and it was so amazing, but to be honest, this is our first time of dealing with really tough experiences. So I, I don't sugarcoat that. I deal with teens who um, have parents who have uh, drug addictions. I deal with teens who are in foster care. I never make the mistake of thinking just because you're at a certain age you're not facing tough issues. Is there anything that you're working on we can look forward to? Uh, yes, I'm extremely excited. Um, I have a second book in the Thunder Road series, which is about teens who are raised in a motorcycle club. I actually hung out with a club for a bit in order to write this book to make it as legitimate as I could. And the second book, Walk the Edge, is coming out on, in March, and I'm very, very excited about this one. Whenever you do write, do you usually get that idea of the themes or the characters or the ending? What, how does it work for you? I always know my ending first. Like that, and, and usually because I do write love stories, there's usually a scene I see in my head where the couple clicks. Like where they have that moment and where they've been butting heads and then they just realize they understand me, they understand my situation. And then I'll end up doing the entire book around that. What would be the biggest message that you hope that readers will pull from your book or from you yourself? That there is hope. Um, I write the books I needed when I was 16. Um, I was in a very dark place and it was almost like a broken merry-go-round. Um, I just thought this is how it's gonna be forever and ever and ever. And I didn't have the life experience to know that this is going to end, that this is not how it's going to be. You can get off the broken merry-go-round. And I always tell people, remember, even in the darkest of circumstances, there is hope. What do you think is the key to get off of that merry-go-round? For me, it was education. Um, I, I knew at 14, I to get off merry-go-round, I needed to go to college. I needed to get an education. Um, Unfortunately, I wish I was the girl in the YA novel who at the end gets like the big full fast full scholarship, but I was not going to be that girl. I made good grades, but I was not going to be that girl. So um, it was knowing my expectations and doing as well as I could in school to get somewhat of a scholarship and then realizing I'm just going to have to work really, really hard to pay for the rest of it. Um, and then I had friends that for them it was trade school. I had friends it was the military. That there are so many options and you just have to poke your head up from the darkness and say, okay, what is my way out? It seems like a theme in your examples where learning about something and kind of getting away from the world that you're in and focusing on something specific. Through my research, I have found so many people who totally transformed their lives by um, doing things like drag racing. I know this is going to sound crazy, but like in one of my books, Question to You, there's legal drag racing. And so there are people who totally focused on, on this and it gave them a positive outside of their experience. And then they met other people who were interested in this and they became like their own family. Um, same thing, Take Me On, it was um, uh, mixed martial arts fighting. And so when people tend to find what their passion is, when people tend to find that thing that makes them different and then they pursue that, they find other like-minded people. And at that point, it's amazing where you can go.